Have you ever played the telephone game when you were a kid? You know, where you spread one piece of information that gets passed along to a whole bunch of different people, but then the message at the end never really quite ends up the same. Well, that's kind of what happens with misinformation. Science information or other information may start as true, but in the end, it may end up as completely different. Here's a really good example. Hey Bruce, have you ever heard of flying fish? There are fish in the ocean that use their tails that whip them through the water, and then all of a sudden they'll use their large fins to glide through the air. It's really amazing. What? Fish have feathers? So as you can see here, as the message got passed along from person to person, the message changed and morphed over time until all of a sudden, fish now have feathers? This is a great example of misinformation. Information that starts as true, but maybe changes by accident or gets miscommunicated, and now all of a sudden that information is now untrue. The key is here, is that I really had no bad intention behind communicating it. All I really wanted to do was share this information with friends. So let's take a look at a piece of misinformation that you might have heard. Maybe at some point in time, somebody may have told you that the North Star is the brightest star in the sky at night. Well, in all fact, it's actually the 50th brightest star. There are lots of other stars that are much brighter, <laughs> including our sun. <laughs> But how did this piece of misinformation get started? Well, our best guess is that maybe it may have started from when African-American slaves were escaping the South and heading north to freedom. They were told to use the North Star as a guide. And this is a great idea considering the North Star stays in the same place in the sky all year long. And it's a pretty easy star to find, but it's certainly not the brightest. So you can see, in this case, there's really no malicious intent behind the piece of information. It's just been changed and not really all that true from its history. So what is this thing about malicious intent? What if somebody started spreading information that was not true, but they had some kind of underlying agenda? Maybe it's something political, or maybe they wanted to discredit a scientist or researcher. This type of information has a special term that's called disinformation. A really famous piece of disinformation involves the lunar landing, the Apollo lunar landing that happened between 1969 and 1972. A piece of disinformation entered our landscape that basically said that the lunar landing never really happened. In other words, astronauts never really landed on the moon. Now, this piece of information has been discredited tons of times, including most recently by taking high definition photography of the actual footprints and flags that the astronauts put there on the moon when they landed. But how did this piece of disinformation get started? Well, we probably think it was most likely due to the space race that the United States was having with the Soviet Union at the time and they wanted to discredit the achievement by the Americans. So how do we identify misinformation and disinformation? You are the first line in defense of spreading this type of misinformation around. The first thing you need to do is to take a look at the headline. How does it make you feel? Does it seem too good to be true? Does it seem completely absurd? Or does it trigger a deep emotional response in you? This is one of the ways that makers of misinformation and disinformation actually use your own emotional triggers to make you want to share their content. But here's the thing. If you're having that emotional reaction, take a step back, do some digging, and take a look. Is this piece of information really true? You can check things like, how many times has this piece of information been shared? If you can only find it in one place, there's a really good chance it's a piece of mis- or disinformation. However, if you can find it reported by several different media outlets, then it's probably something that is being reported in the news and probably is true. Looking at who's sharing it, who's reporting it, and whether they're reputable media outlets will also help you discover if this is a piece of mis- or disinformation or whether it's true or not. Another thing you can do is to check who originally shared the content. Was it a scientist, a journalist, or was it even anonymous? 
take a look at who that person actually is. Who are they? Take a look at their account, because I'll tell you, there are a lot of people who create fake accounts that make it look like they're somebody else to hide their identity. So by taking a look at the original source, you can discover whether or not it's true. If you're really unsure, you can get the internet to actually work with you. There's all kinds of amazing fact-finding sites out there that have done the digging and done the fact-checking for you. If they're really good, they'll even show you the source and back it up. The spread of misinformation stops with you. Once you know a piece of information is untrue, there's just one easy thing to do. Pull the plug, stop sharing it. Now, even if you did happen to spread a piece of misinformation, don't worry. All you have to do is just remove it from your social media or talk to the people that you spread it with. Let them know that that piece of information you shared was untrue. And don't worry about it. Everybody can get fooled with misinformation.